of all the topics when choosing to develop and build a hi-fi system, the topic of loudspeaker cables and interconnects is probably the most contentious of all. There are more emotions, more arguments about interconnects and loudspeaker cables than probably any other aspect of hi-fi. So when our clients come to me and ask, well, what is the best loudspeaker cable for the Sibelius loudspeaker? I want to give you the answer and I want to give them the answer, but it, it is important that they understand how we came to that conclusion because there are so many options ahead of us. So in this little talk, I want to explain a little bit about the, the physics, the science, the electronics of, of how a speaker cable can make a difference. And let's be clear, loudspeaker cables do make a difference to the sound. So I want to cover that, but I also want to cover the process by which we chose the ideal loudspeaker cable for the Sibelius loudspeaker, bearing in mind that it connects directly to the back of the power amplifier, straight to the back terminals of the Sibelius loudspeaker, and there is nothing between the terminal and the drive cone. So any change in the cable will give us a critical effect on the sound. Okay, now, when I was 13 years old in school, my physics teacher taught me about current and voltage. And it was quite interesting because in, I suppose he oversimplified it for us boys. But basically, what he was saying was to think about electricity and current as like a, a big fat water pipe with water flowing down it. And the voltage is a bit like the speed in which the water flows down the pipe. But if you've studied physics to A-level and beyond and even into good degrees and recently you'll know that that's nonsense and it's just not true. Let me show you one very important element. Here is a water pipe. And if I connect this end here to my dishwasher tap behind my sink in the kitchen and open the tap, then obviously water is going to pour out of here all over the kitchen floor, which is not an ideal situation. On the other hand, if I plug this mains cable into a wall socket, nothing is going to come out of here, nothing at all, unless I'm foolish enough to try and touch something. In fact, nothing happens unless this is connected to an internal circuit or grounded to earth. But even then, it's not that the electricity flows along the cable and out here. It doesn't work like that. In recent years, with a thanks to electron microscopes, we've learned a lot more about actually the transmission of electricity and how that works on an atomic level. In fact, what you have to think about it is a bit like a row of dominoes sitting in the cable, but they're not sitting in a nice neat line. These electrons are just clustered around in the cable. And if there's a lot of oxygen in the copper, you can imagine that there's areas where there's more electrons than others. Well, what basically happens is that when you plug this in and it's connected to a circuit, one electron smacks into the other electron, which smacks into the next one, which smacks into the next, and they just bash into each other, basically not really moving. And that happens right the way through the circuit. So it is definitely not that you have a battery at one end and a lamp at the other. And when the, the electrons from the battery flow from the battery through the cable into the lamp until everything's finished. It's not like that at all. It's just that these electrons bash to against each other until they, it runs out of energy. So with this fundamental difference, it's really, really important. Now, I hinted at the fact that these electrons are not in a neat line and they cluster around. And a very interesting thing happened around about 2013 for me whilst we were developing the Sibelius loudspeaker. We had the cabinet absolutely where we wanted it. We had the drive cone we thought where we wanted it. The marriage was perfect. We had fine-tuned the opening, the ports, everything. After months and months of work, we just about got it right. 
But you know, I was sitting back listening to the music and I was listening to, um, I remember I was listening to Catherine Fer Ferrier singing um, and her voice was just a little bit like this and it was a little bit harsh. And when we looked at it, it was right between 2000 and 4000 hertz. There was a little bump and it was a bit ugly. Now we could have easily have corrected that with a, a capacitor and a resistor and an inductor, which is the, the standard components that you have in a crossover in most loudspeakers when you have more than one drive unit and even some with one drive unit. When your loudspeaker cable connects to the back of the terminals, then obviously the wires go not to the drive cones, but into a printed circuit board with components on and you have capacitors, inductors and resistors. And by using these three components in various combinations, you can completely sh shape the sound and what frequencies go where and in what phase those frequencies are going to the, to the speakers. But we don't use any filters. Our loudspeaker cables directly connected. So what could we do? This annoying little essence there, when you listen to a clarinet or the upper registers of the cello, it was a little bit harsh. Some people like it. I know that some people do, but I didn't. And my listening panel agreed, this is not what we spent 30 years trying to develop. So in desperation, I phoned Mark Fenlon, the, the guy who designed the drive cones, and he's been designing drive cones for decades. And like a master artist who can mix magenta and cyan colors together and maybe add a little bit of turpentine to create a special effect on an oil painting, he can do the same thing with the components of a drive cone. And when I explained to him the problem we were having, he said, Harley, I know exactly the problem. Leave it with me and I'll send you a pair of new drive cones. Tell me what you think. Well, the drive units arrived we plugged them in and they were perfect. And all he had done was change the little voice coil, the wire on the voice coil, the copper coil, was just a normal copper wire, a cylindrical wire, if you like, a, or round profile into a different shape. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna tell you what shape he converted it to, but he just changed the wire to a different shape. And that different shape took all that harshness out and made it beautifully smooth and natural. And this was a real changing moment for me because it really, really proved that the profile of a conductor in a cable can have a massive influence on the sound. And then so can the capacitance, the kind of plastics that you use in the cable or whatever. So these things are important. So to cut a long story short, how did we come to our cable? So we now have our drive cone in the cabinet we have the cabinet we've chosen to link the drive cone to the terminal post on the back of the cabinet with silver plated copper multi-strand cable. We separate them so that they're like about 10 centimeters apart until they come to the, to the terminals. And then we think, well, that's it. That's exactly what we want. That, that silver coating will just give the drive cone just a little bit of lift that we want to make it absolutely natural. When, you, when the drummer hits the cymbals with a stick, you get the little ting of, the, of, the, of that sound and it's just absolutely right, not exaggerated. So you might say, well, why don't we just say to all of our customers, use silver plated copper multi-strand cable and you're fine. Well, there's two reasons. The first reason is over longer lengths, it might in some circumstances make it sound a little bit harsher than I would like or a bit brighter than I would like is probably a better word or brilliant and not exactly how we want it. And secondly, it's not always easy to get hold of. Often it goes out of stock and it's expensive and, and the prices vary, of course, a lot. So we thought, well, also a lot of our customers will already have expensive cables that they've invested in which they think are a really great match for their amplifiers and everything and now we're asking them to go out and buy a different cable because of our loudspeaker. So we decided there and then that all the development, all the referencing, all the listening to amps and combinations no matter where it is at trade shows everywhere what we will do is we will use standard copper multi-strand cable. 
because we know that anyone can get it anywhere and it's relatively cheap. So what we've done to help our, our clients if they want to is that we've, we are making up cables at the factory and basically it's very, very simple. We have a, a cable, one for each terminal. So this is the, obviously this is the, uh, the black for the, the black terminal, the negative terminal. And as you can see here, it's just thin 80 strands of copper, high quality copper, 80 strands. And they're in a little rubber, white rubber sleeve. And this rubber sleeve is coated with another rubber sleeve. So there's no plastic in this. This is just a rubber sleeve. And it's just pure copper, one for each terminal. And because it's quite thick, I mean, basically this piece is six millimeters thick, you can imagine that you can run a very long distance without any negative effect on the sound. So easily up to eight, eight and a half, ten meters with this particular cable in this configuration. No problem at all. Because the basic rule is that the resistance of your cable should not be more than 1% of the resistance of your drive cones, and that's 7.5 ohms, and we're nowhere near that amount. Now, at the other end of the cable, we've chosen for a very simple connector device that we have made for us. And this connector device is very simple. You just basically plug that into the socket on the, on the banana socket on the back of the amplifier, and then you hold the end here, and you just twist it against this, these little pins, and these little pins just push up and force these four parts of this gold-plated pin out very slightly, so it just locks beautifully tight. So basically, you can just fit it and forget it, and that's it. And these are our, our cables. Now, we, tr we make them ourselves, as I say, and we try and keep the prices very realistic. And the idea for this is that we call this a neutral balanced cable. Now, there are many in the industry who say, well, yeah, but that's not neutral because it's this, that. No, but it is for us. This is our Greenwich Mean Time. If you go to London, there's a place called Greenwich, and there's a, a wire that goes through the land. And if you stand on the west side of that, you're in the Western Hemisphere. And if you stand on the east, someone decided that is the center of time many, many, many years ago. And for us, this is our neutral balanced cable. If you use this kind of cable, whether you make it yourself or get it from us, we know that the Sibelius loudspeaker will sound how it should sound as we designed it and as we have it in our listening room. Of course, and then you've got the exciting job of matching your amplifiers and your, and your front end and your turntables and all the rest of it. And that, that's, that's great fun. And that's confusing enough as it is. And once you've done that, once you've got your room acoustics, how you want them, you've got the amplifier of your choice, you've got your turntable or your DAC or whatever it is at the front end of your choice, you've got everything sorted, all your interconnects, and you've got your, your cable and you're listening and you think, you know what, I'd like that a little bit brighter or I'm not so sure. Then for the very fine tuning, you can go down to your local hi-fi retail store and maybe they'll lend you some cables for you to try out or whatever. And then you can experiment and then fine tune knowing that you're not throwing away something which is incredibly expensive. But in all honesty, this should last you forever and ever and you can hand it down to your children and their children just like you can with our loudspeakers. I hope you found that interesting and uh, enjoy the music. After all, that's what our passion is all about, isn't it? Thank you for listening.